This is a video about using the Heiko 808 desoldering gun. You can find a lot of information about this online and it's not terribly expensive and it's by far one of the very best tools you can have on your workbench besides a good soldering iron. So my example for today, I have two boards I'm going to show. Neither one of these boards are out of Morant's audio equipment. These are modern, more modern boards. Uh, they come from the type of equipment that we repair in my business. And But it's a good example of how well the HACO works. This board is by far one of the toughest boards to work on. This is a double-sided through-hole plated board which means that you have circuit board traces on this side, you have circuit board traces on the back side, and many of the through holes have sleeves uh, where the solder, when the component is soldered in place, it's soldered on the front, through the sleeve, and onto the back all at the same time. So this type of board is really difficult to desolder components from. If you don't do it right, you'll pull the sleeve out of the hole in the board and ruin it. And this board, if it were available to buy new or as a replacement, would cost about $400. So you don't want to wreck it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these four capacitors. This board, typically when we rebuild it, there's 23 capacitors that have to be replaced sometimes other components also but always the capacitors on this board so I'm going to do these four small capacitors because they're easy to see and it's easy to show how well the HACO works so all you have to do I'm going to turn it over these are the solder pads for those four capacitors I'm going to do them one at a time all you have to do you take the HACO you slide it over the lead which ideally comes through the middle of the through hole. You melt the solder and on this board, because it's through hole plated, you give it a few seconds to heat up. And what you're doing is you're holding the tip of the HACO against the lead so it's heating the, the solder through the, through the sleeve and then you pull the trigger. And that's all there is to it. Now I'll do the other lead. And if we did our job right, it should come right out. Now, in this case, not quite. This board can be really tricky because the wave soldering that was done by the manufacturer is really poor quality. and there isn't a lot of solder sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch it up with the soldering iron. The way the HACO works is you're melting the solder through the sleeve and then vacuuming it away. If you don't have a, an original solder joint that's well done. It can be really frustrating. Put this down and I think it should pop out. I think the leads just bent over a little bit. Not a lot. And there we go clean, it's removed. You can actually see, although you probably can't actually see, you can actually see the sleeve that's through the hole, goes through the hole, and they're both intact. So now we'll do the other three. All right, we'll move on to the next one. One thing you'll experience on a lot of these manufactured boards are the component leads are actually bent over a certain amount. I think that's done to hold the component in place while it's being manufactured. And here we have 
Number two. And we'll move on to number three. And number three fell out all on its own. And now we'll do the fourth one. And the fourth one fell out on its own. So there you have it. In six minutes, I replaced four capacitors. If I was doing that without making a video while I was doing it, it would take me about half that amount of time. Typically, this board, to replace all 23 capacitors and do a good job at it, well, actually, there's 24 because I have to replace this big one here also. So to do all of that, oh, and there's 25 because there's also this one down here that has to be replaced. Um, it typically would take me maybe 25 or 30 minutes to do the whole thing, reassemble it back in the unit that it came from, and test it out and be ready to go. So you can see the HACO is a real good tool to have on your bench. For my second board example, this is a board out of a different piece of equipment that we work on all the time, and this is a 20-pin IC package that has to be replaced. This is a simpler board. It's a single-sided board. No through-hole plating. Just has a lot of jumpers, which accomplishes the same thing as the double-side board in some respects. But these little 20-pin IC packages have to be replaced often, and these also are really difficult to remove if you don't have the right tool. So let's flip it over and see how well it goes. So you've got 20 solder joints to remove the component and we'll just start at one end and work our way up. That's the first ten. And that's all 20. Let's see how we did. Just like that. And there it is. It's not hot. It came out clean. It actually could be reused if you were salvaging components off of a board. It's in perfect condition to be reused. The pins aren't bent. The holes in the board are clean and the pads are ready to have the new IC soldered in place. I don't really see how you can work on electronics if you don't have the right tools. The HACO 808 is just as important of a tool as a temperature controlled soldering station. It eliminates overheating of components when you remove them. It eliminates overheating of solder pads, especially on older equipment where the traces are old and the adhesive is not as good as what they make today. I just don't see any way you can get by without one. So buy one. If you do two projects with it, it'll pay for itself. If you avoid ruining a single circuit board, it'll more than pay for itself. Heiko H08, buy one today.